Hey everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Tutorial Park. In today's episode, I'm gonna go with you through the functionality of the Ride Vehicle Editor plugin. Now, um, OpenRC2 uh, allows for people to create plugins and they're also really easy to install. I'm just gonna quickly show you how you can get this plugin. So uh, to get this plugin, just go to openrc2plugins.org. I'll leave a link in the video description. And then in the search, just type vehicle and then you should end up in a list and there you should find the right vehicle editor. Now you can see a description uh, of the plugin also with some images of uh, parks where this plugin has been used very helpful and also some uh, yeah, instructions here for uh, for using it uh, change log etc now, to uh, install it just click uh, get plugin here that brings you to the github page and then over here you'll find a right vehicle editor 2.1b dot zip just unzip it and then you put the uh, dot js file that you get uh, in your openrc2 slash plugin folder just follow the instructions here it's quite easy okay when you have done that then if you hold the map icon here you should find edit ride vehicles and doing that brings up the ride vehicle editor now i've created this uh, car ride here um, i'm just going to put it in test mode and immediately close it so the vehicles spawn and this one seems a bit uh, twitchy anyway um yeah when we've opened the ride, um, yeah, you can select any ride in the park uh, in here. If the ride is opened, or uh, at least if the ride has spawned its vehicles, um, you should find it in the list here. Now, um, these, car, uh, these cars are actually made up of three vehicles. There's an invisible vehicle in front of the car and one behind the car. Uh, not really sure why that is. Maybe it's, it's to open and close any doors that they may pass through. But that isn't really important. Um, so here we have car ride one selected. Uh, we have now selected train one, vehicle one. Uh, as you can see, vehicle one of train one is an invisible car. And here we can do the plus icon. And now we are, have selected the actual vehicle here, which is a sport car. The variant is zero. See if I, I could also change the variant here. And now I've made the vehicle invisible. Zero, no vehicle is visible again. So you can use this to uh, um, move through the different vehicles of the train. You can see vehicle one invisible, vehicle two zero, that's the actual car. Vehicle three also invisible. And we can also scroll through the different trains here. And we can also have a drop down. If you have a lot of trains, uh, it can be useful uh, to be able to uh, select the one you want. Okay, let's go back to train one here. Now, uh, if you want, you can even reverse the train here, so uh, or the vehicle. So let's select uh, vehicle two, which is the visible one. And here we click uh, reverse, and now the vehicle will go through the track backwards. Uh, this will work for uh, any vehicle uh, in the game. I could also uh, reverse a vehicle of this Conda ride if I wanted. So I'm just gonna pause the game, and now this vehicle is reversed. It's, it's that easy to uh, to reverse a vehicle. Now you can also recolor individual vehicles here if you want. And uh, all three colors are always shown here. Even if you can only uh, recolor two colors on a vehicle. Now um, if we have a vehicle selected here. I've now only selected the middle vehicle uh, of this uh, train. Um, here with track progress you can move the vehicle around the track if you want. Now um. Yeah, you can do this when a vehicle is running, uh, but you can also do it uh, if it's stopped in the station, which is usually a, a better way to do it. Now, um, you can also use this, for example, to uh, 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 put a vehicle in an in a orientation that you want. So, for example, this uh, vehicle is now parked in the station. I've selected vehicle 2. I'm just going to move it on the track, move it forward like this. So now it's in a, in a different orientation. And then there's a useful button here on the left, the tweezer. And if your train is parked in the station, you can take any of its vehicles and move them anywhere else. So um, I've now selected this vehicle too. With the tweezer, I can now place it anywhere I want. And then we have a parked car here. 
Now, if we do track progress again uh, while it's parked here, while it's placed here, then it will snap back to the track, as you can see. But uh, I can use uh, these uh, buttons now for changing the X uh, or the Y position. But that's pretty useful. And it, now it's snapped back to the track. Now, there's also this button here for spacing. Um, that's useful if you have a long train. So I'm now just going to close the close the ride. I'm going to set it to one car and I'm going to enable the cheat to disable vehicle limits. And that allows us to make a longer train. So now I have one train with, let's put five vehicles. I'm going to put it in test mode, immediately close it. So it spawns the vehicles, but they don't move anywhere. Now, if I now select vehicle two, now only then the spacing becomes available. Spacing is not usually available for the first vehicle. Um, if you want to change the spacing, um, you see all these buttons here for uh, synchronization. So um, if I want to change the spacing for all these vehicles, now here we have different uh, things we can select. For example, uh, you can select uh, I want all the I want the current vehicle and all the following vehicles. Uh, uh, yeah, for the changes to be applied to, or we can have all vehicles on this chain, on this train. So now I just set all vehicles in the train. I said synchronize, and everything I change here now uh, gets applied to all vehicles. So for example, now I just change the spacing, and you can see the spacing between all these vehicles will increase. Now, um, this train still has the front vehicle, which is invisible, so uh, they will move backwards with respect to that first vehicle if we change the spacing. We also decrease it again, and it uh, is back to what it used to be. Now, um, since the uh, train is now parked in the station, well, we are still synchronized, so we uh, can change the Z position for all vehicles if we want. Now, um, here's some more properties. Uh, seats. Uh, you can change the number of seats on the on the vehicle. Now, I, I typically use that when I'm uh, doing advanced techniques like shoe stringing. There's one vehicle that's underground running on a different track. And for that first uh, underground vehicle, I typically set the number of seats to zero. So guests don't ride this uh, underground uh, vehicle, which is not supposed to be seen anyway. Uh, you can also change the mass of a vehicle if you want. Uh, for example, these uh, invisible vehicles uh, have a mass of zero. If your train only consists of vehicles that have a mass of zero, um, your train will start flying around whenever it's uh, run. So uh, then uh, if you have a situation like that, you may want to increase the mass a bit. Now, um, the right vehicle editor uh, also makes a distinction between powered vehicles and unpowered vehicles. For example, when you normally open a car ride, these vehicles will start running forward uh, on their own with a certain max speed and acceleration, which you can set here. Now, if we uh, choose a different vehicle, for example, a uh, wild mouse, you can see the acceleration and max speed can no longer be changed because uh, coaster cars are only uh, influenced by gravity. So and by stuff like chain lifts. They won't start running on their own. So that's uh, when you have an unpowered car. So when you have a powered car, let's go back to uh, sports cars. I will just uh, make it a normal train again. So let's just uh, run it. And if I now select it in the right vehicle editor, and I can, for example, change the max speed. And you can see it's now a lot faster. And the acceleration, I believe it goes up to 255. And when it's so high, it will immediately reach uh, its, uh, the max speed that you've selected. So yeah, as you can see, it's now uh, really fast. So that's uh, some of the stuff you can do here. Now, um, if you want to uh, move your train or your vehicle forward, but um, yeah, the, but it's taking quite long to do. For example, this will take ages if your track is really long. Uh, here you can also set a multiplier for any of these stats. So for example, if I increase the max speed now, it goes in steps of 10. And if I want, if I move it forward now, it also goes in steps of 10. So it's much faster. And you can uh, increase the multiplier uh, to 100 if you want. Very useful. Okay, I've now created a second car ride. And yeah, if we go into the ride vehicle editor here, I've selected vehicle two still. 
uh, you can actually also copy uh, a vehicle. So if you've changed a lot of stats on a vehicle and don't want to do it again for every vehicle, um, here you can select this button to copy this vehicle. And if we then uh, go with the tweezer, we select this vehicle here, we can then paste and then it gets turned into a copy of the vehicle you copied earlier. This can be uh, really useful in some situations. And you can also uh, locate your vehicle if you want. So now the window here is centered on this vehicle that is selected here. We select this vehicle. Now we are centered over here. Something which can also be uh, very useful. Okay, I have uh, changed this train back to a longer one. So we have one train with six cars. And let's go in the right vehicle editor again. Let's say um, I only want these uh, last three uh, vehicles of the train to be uh, further apart or uh, moved backwards. But these front three should stay in place. So I just select this one with the, the, the picker icon. And then we select here following vehicles on this train. We set synchronize. And then we move to track progress. And now you can see only these last three vehicles of the train move backwards. And if we now test the ride, you can see it still moves as one train, but these last three are now moved backwards more. Okay, and finally, here's a last thing that I want to show uh, for the ride vehicle editor. Here you can, if you have a ride selected here, you can select edit ride here. And then you can change the stats for a ride. Now, if a ride doesn't have its stats calculated yet, the uh, excitement will be set to minus 0.01. Um, if I change the stats now, then uh, yeah, after within a few seconds, uh, the stats will change back to what they used to be. So to change them, we uh, set freeze rating calculation here. And then we can change the stats however we like. Now you can also again set the multipliers. So let's do something uh, crazy. It's uh, pretty nauseating, right? But as you can see, uh, if I change the stats here, you can also see them change over here. Now, this is something which I use a lot, for, especially for shoes during rides, because depending on how they build, uh, the stats are usually terrible. So uh, then you can change them into something that the guests are actually willing to ride. Now you can also change the construction uh, date here if you want. Uh, you can set if it's a custom design uh, or not. It's something which automatically gets uh, ticked. If you uh, build your own ride design, it's not ticked if you uh, place down a design that was already uh, built before and you just plop it down in the park. And um, there's also a scenario flag usually. Uh, when you create the scenario, you can usually set um, rides that are not allowed to be uh, destroyed by the or changed by the user. And then you can set this flag um, so over here. You can set the flag indestructible. All right, as per usual, I'm going to add another one of my patrons to the park as an entertainer using a different plugin, but uh, that will be a topic for a different tutorial video. <music> All right, Bull Pit Warrior. Thank you so much for uh, supporting my channel on Patreon. It's really appreciated. And also thank you so much for joining uh, so many of our contests and creating such beautiful uh, designs. It's uh, really wonderful. And I hope you enjoy your spot here uh, above the swinging ship hanging from the top structure here. All right, that was this quick overview for the right vehicle editor plugin. I personally use this uh, plugin a lot and I really want to thank uh, Bassi for creating this. Now I will uh, leave a link in the video description to show you where you can download this plugin. Alright, if this tutorial is useful for you please give it a like, it would really help out my channel. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions about this plugin and if you want to see more videos like these uh, I recommend you to subscribe to my channel. Alright, that's going to be it. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again in the next one. See you later.